Good morning, this is Professor Mayer, and this is our second video related to our risk assessment process related to accounts receivable. If you remember, in our first session, we took a look at two files, the accounts receivable data file, which is an access database, and the customer listing, which is a text file. And we use the Excel query function to develop specific tables. Now, if you did that correctly, what you end up with is the file that you see here. I actually, I saved it as the AR project, but essentially what we have is we have two primary files. We have the customer listing, and the customer listing includes 87 customers with credit limits. If you remember, we had one credit limit related to James Bond that had no data. So we have our first finding. The other major file that we have is coming from the accounts receivable file, which is the access database file. And what we did is we created this file and eliminated those items that were paid. We also eliminated any transactions that occurred on April 1st, 2015. This is the file that we ended up with. What I ended up doing is I saved it as the AR project. What I hopefully you have done this already. Now what you notice is there is a sheet one. There's nothing on sheet one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that table. So at this point, what we have is we have two separate tables. Now we're going to get into reformatting these with the query function. But the first thing that I'd like to do is to take a look at the aging of our transactions. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be aging based upon the invoice number and we're going to be aging based upon the date. We're going to do this using a pivot table. So the first function that we're going to be reviewing is how we actually use a pivot table. There's a couple of ways that we want to get into this, but the first thing we want to make sure of is that your cursor is within the body of the table. The easiest way to access the pivot table is to go into insert and click pivot table. Now what we want to do is we want to create a new worksheet and you notice that the table range is actually picking up the actual table that we have. So like I said, as long as you have your cursor within the table, you're going to be just fine. We click OK and we have the pivot table here. We have the pivot table fields over here. We have filters. We're not going to be talking about columns. We're not talking about right now. Uh, rows and values are the two things that we're concerned with. So what we want to do is we want to take the date. Now this will automatically fill into rows. You could move this over to columns, which is fine, uh, but we're going to just keep it into rows that you see right here. I want to expand this so that we're actually looking at the, not quarters, but we're looking at months. So the first thing you notice here is that we have accounts receivable that goes back to November 2014. And again, keep in mind that the date of this file is as of March 31st, 2015. We want to take a look at gross amount. And the reality is you can also put in the two uh, taxes. Uh, you don't necessarily need that, but it is there. Now, I'm not really interested in the quarter. So if you go to the row here and we simply just remove this field, is what we have is we have a really nice table that gives us our accounts receivable. So what this is saying is that the gross amount is $369,000, which by the way, what I'd like to do is I'd like to change these to dollar value. So there's two ways that we can do this. We can go to home and we can click the dollar value. If you want to expand this, just highlight and double click. The other way, which is actually kind of neat, is if you just highlight everything and you go control shift four. Now you notice that the four, that the shift is a dollar sign. So we set that up there. And actually I prefer the 
control shift dollar sign or control shift four as compared to the dollar sign over here, but uh, it's really, it really doesn't matter. What we end up with is we end up with a table that has our gross amount, our taxes, and what's really cool about this function is that what you can actually do, let's say we were interested, let's say we're an auditor, and we want to see what these accounts are that are November 2014. If we click this within the sum, is what it's going to tell us is it's going to give us what the account is that is uh, outstanding. So we have the account number CO20, we have the invoice number, and you notice that this was a transaction that occurred on November 4th. We'll go back over here and what your assignment is going to be related to the aging report and we're just going to take this we're going to call this aging report is what i want you to do is just write a brief paragraph here basically staying stating that uh, there's 369 thousand dollars outstanding there are accounts that are past due to november 2014 and uh, you want to identify what those accounts are. Now, again, why are we doing this? We are doing this in the risk assessment phase of the audit, and what we're interested in is we're interested in finding out where the risk areas are. If we identify a customer that has a, an account balance that goes beyond five months uh, past due, that's pretty far back. One of the issues that you have as an auditor is when you're presenting this information in the financial statements, you're presenting it as net accounts receivable. So what the organization will need to do is to need to set up an allowance for doubtful account. And this is going to be part of your narrative is making sure that the organization has an allowance for doubtful account that is appropriate to the accounts receivable. That's what we're doing is we're going to be setting up a number of tables and within these tables we're very interested in making sure that you as the auditor is providing guidance to the audit director in terms of what these issues are. What we've done is we've identified the aging report and a few brief comments related to this that you can then direct to your partner or to the partner or the managing partner of this assignment is going to be very good as he or she actually then develops the audit. I'm going to just go ahead and just delete the sheet, uh, but I th recommend that you actually spend a little bit of time in terms of figuring out how you can actually work through this function. So again, if you're interested in finding out what these accounts are, you just double click and you are going to find the accounts that are the aged accounts. Now, what's interesting here is the same account number is showing up as another old account uh, back to December 2014. So as an auditor, once you start exploring these things, you're going to identify issues that become essentially things that you want to look at throughout the course of the audit. We're deleting that. So essentially at this point, we have three files. The next function that I want to share with you relates to conditional formatting. We have our customer list here, and somehow we want to highlight the fact that we have one customer that doesn't have a credit limit. Part of your narrative is you're going to put together a paragraph that basically says, um, through the analysis of accounts uh, of your customer listing, we identified one customer that does not have a credit limit. Well, that's a control issue. And what you need to be able to do is to articulate this to the client in terms of why the credit limit is important. You also need to be able to articulate and identify the process in terms of bringing on new customers. And I think this is part of the process that you need to be able to do as an auditor. This is part of the risk assessment that we're actually looking at. Let's go to the conditional formatting. So what I'm doing is I am highlighting the credit limit in the table, again, in the home tab, in the conditional formatting, 
There's a couple of cool, cool features that, the first thing that we want to look at is we're going to click the conditional formatting button. And we want to highlight the cell that actually is blank. If we go to new rule, and we're going to create the new rule that format only cell that contains. So the cell value is equal to zero. And we do the conditional formatting here. So how do we want to actually format this? And what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a border. And we're going to fill it with, let's say, whatever color that we want. Okay, we hit OK. We hit OK here. And then what we see is that there is one account, James Bond, that actually has a zero balance. That's a neat little function in terms of being able to highlight values that are problematic. What we want to do is we want to create a brief narrative related to this, identify what the issues are for the customer list, identify specific steps that you need to, to go through as an auditor to make sure that the controls are in place as we are establishing our customers. What I want to do now is I want to go back to the accounts receivable file and we're going to re-look at this using the data query because what I want to be able to do is I want to sort these based upon the account numbers. So what I'm looking for are values associated with account numbers. So we have our accounts receivable file. We go to the tab that says data and we are going to look at queries. So the queries are going to show up over here. So we did two queries. We did a customer listing. You notice how that shows up and we have the accounts receivable. We swing our cursor over here and click edit. And what do we have? But we have the query that we developed in the prior video. So you notice that what we have is we filtered the rows, we created the paid flag, we created uh, the date limit that we have eliminated from the file transactions that occurred on April 1st, 2015. Now what we want to do is we want to use the group by function. The group by function is in the home tab and we do the group by. We're going to group by a more sophisticated pivot table. That's probably the best way to describe this. It creates a separate file, but it's basically the same type of thing that you would see in a pivot table, but it's a little bit more sophisticated. So what we're going to do is we're going to group by account number. And again, what's the goal? The goal is to accumulate all the invoices for each account so that we have the account balances. The first is going to be our gross amount gross sales or gross accounts receivable. This is not sales, this is accounts receivable. We are going to not count, but we're going to sum. And the column that we're going to sum is gross amount. We want to then create a new tab or a new column for the GST tax. So this is the gross GST and we are summing and this is going to be GST. The last item we click the add column button and we're looking for gross PST and this is a sum and we go to gross PST here. We click this and we are good. We've got everything here in the table. So essentially what you see is here is that we have the account number, we have the gross amount, the tax, the GST tax, and the PST tax. Let's go ahead and close and load. And this will load in the same accounts receivable. This is not a problem. 
But what I'd like to do while we're here, we're going to, to look at the VLOOKUP table. But at this point, what I'm interested in looking at is just considering the taxes as a percentage of gross amount. And I think we're going to find an interesting issue here. So first column is we're going to call this a GST percentage. And the next column we're going to call the PST percentage. So I have two separate file uh, columns here, a simple calculation. So we want to look at the GST percentage as a percentage of gross sales. So we have GST divided by gross accounts receivable. And you notice that it fills up. Let me do, before we turn this into percentages, let me do the other one. So PST is gross PST divided by gross accounts receivable, and this fills up. Two ways that we can do this. If we go to the Home tab, we can do a percentage. Another way to do this is we go Control Shift 5. I think I'm going to center these just so that they look a little bit nicer. Maybe make these columns just a little bit smaller. Now, you notice that the tax itself, let me actually do one more thing here, is the tax should be, so you notice that most of them on the GST tax is 6.54, on the PST tax is 7.41. But there are some that are actually greater than that amount. And in fact, if we were to like take a look at some of these and sort from smallest to largest, is we see that the, in some cases it's negative. Well, it brings up another issue that we have actually have accounts with negative balances. But in any event, what you see here is we have accounts that are being charged a different rate all the way down here, and this account is being charged a much higher rate. Why that is? Well, we don't know right now, but we certainly have something that you as an auditor will need to take a look at as you are conducting your audit. So again, what is the purpose of this exercise? The purpose of this exercise in the risk assessment phase is to assess where the risk areas are. So the question becomes is, are we actually charging the appropriate amount of tax for each of our customers? That's the question. We don't know what the answer is. We know that the, based upon the table, that there are percentages that don't really quite add up. It's a little strange here. Maybe there's a good reason for it, but certainly as an auditor, what we're interested in is we're interested in finding out what is actually taking place. So again, our assessment right now is where are the risks? And what we see is there are certainly are risks in terms of charging tax. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the gross amounts in accounts receivable. Going up here, what you see is we actually have account balances that are negative. This is another audit finding. And there certainly are legitimate reasons why there are negative balances. There also are risks that maybe suggest that maybe we're posting to the wrong account or other issues related to accounts receivable that we as an auditor need to look into. These may be totally appropriate, but in the risk assessment, what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine what are the areas that we want to look at in the course of our audit. So in the course of our audit, we're actually interested in finding out why we have negative balances. The other issue, and again, these are the things that you need to develop in your write-up. Negative balances in accounts receivable may in fact be a liability. So part of our assessment of our liabilities when we do a search for liabilities is, are there negative balances in accounts receivable? 
Before we start talking about the VLOOKUP table, there's one other tool that I want to share with you that I think is kind of neat. And when we're looking at the sales tax, what we see here is we see some very low values. We see a, a couple of values that are actually pretty high. Well, it's not visually conducive to actually see these things. So what I would like to do is to share with you another conditional formatting tool. So if we go to conditional formatting, and what we look at is we look at more rules and then go format cells based upon value. So what it's looking at is it's highlighting the lower values in a darker, the higher values in a lighter. So we click this and visually what we're going to see is that the low values are highlighted in a dark. The high values are highlighted in a lighter color. You're actually able to see what's taking place, which I think is a pretty cool tool, especially as we're trying to identify things visually. Now, what I want to talk about is the VLOOKUP table. You maybe have heard about this, maybe you've used it in other classes, uh, but what we want to do, and the reason that we're using the VLOOKUP table, is we have the account number here, we have the value of our accounts receivable. I'm not sure why the value of accounts receivable is missing, so we just say AR balance. But there's two things that we don't have. It would be nice if we had the names. Okay, so where are the names? The names are over here. And we have the account number. And then the other piece of it is that we want to link the credit limit to the accounts receivable file so that we can compare this to the account AR balance. So how do we do this? Well, this is the VLOOKUP table function, and we're going to do two VLOOKUP tables. One that we're going to bring in the name, and the next we're going to bring in the credit limit, and we're going to do some analysis from there. So the first thing that we want to do is right next to the account number, is we're going to open up a column. So we just highlight it, left click, or right click, and we want to insert a column. Okay, so that's that. And we're gonna name this the uh, account name. In the first cell, we're going to use the function of the lookup. So within the function bar, we go equal the lookup, we put the first parenthesis. From there, what we're able to do is we click the function tool. What we're looking at is we want to look up this value. So we're looking up this value, which is the P007. So we click that. The table array is the table that we are then comparing this to. So the table array is the customer list and simply just highlighting the table like this is going to be just fine. What column within this table array are we looking at? What we're looking at is, well, we're comparing it to column one, but what we want to pick up is column two. So we want to pick up column two here. And then if we're looking for an exact match, we type in false. And you notice here that the name is going to show up as Mandy Pumps. We click OK. And something really interesting is taking place. And let's talk about this. Let me just highlight this here. Is, uh, by the way, uh, just again, looking at the, the lookup function is we are looking up the account number. We're going to the table array in the customer list. And we're going to pick up column two we use false because we want an exact match. You notice that there are a number of accounts that say NA. So this is actually kind of interesting. This is a, another audit finding in your risk assessment. And this basically is saying that these accounts, P009, W007, are not in your customer record. And some of these accounts actually have some a pretty substantial balance. So W020 owes us $17,000. But as an auditor and as management, 
we have no idea who this account is. So this essentially is creating a tremendous audit risk to the organization. Why is it creating a tremendous audit risk to the organization? Because we are selling to people where these customers are not in our customer record. It also means that these customers have not been vetted through a legitimate process. If you remember, we identified one customer that there is no credit limit. So there's a weakness in the controls related to the customer listing. So we have a number of accounts with no names. What we want to do is we want to use the sum if function to identify the total accounts receivable balance of accounts with no names. So let's use that function. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the sum if range, but we're going to call this the accounts with no names. And the functionality that we see here is we're going to go equal sign sum if and the beginning parenthesis. If we then click the function tool, what we're going to see is we're going to see the range criteria and some range. Now the criteria that we're interested in is the criteria where the account name is equal to the dollar sign or the uh, ampersand n slash a. The range is what we're comparing this to. So if we compare this to our account name balance and the criteria is going to go equals in parentheses equals the pound sign capital N slash capital A and the closing pound sign is what this is going to do is going to identify what the criteria is and if the criteria matches that it's going to sum the range. So the range that we're looking at is the accounts receivable balance that we see here. We click OK and we come up with a value of $85,388. Now, what does that mean? Since we're in the risk assessment, we're not sure what that means, but certainly it implies that there may be internal control issues specifically related to our account receivable balances and how we actually issue credit, which poses a question related to the value of accounts receivable. Because if we are owed money, but we don't know who these people are, how are we going to get that money back? One of the issues that we're going to press forward on as we are conducting the audit. Let's do a, another VLOOKUP table. And we're going to do this VLOOKUP table directly against the AR balance. And what we want to do here is we want to add the credit limit. The credit limit then gives us the opportunity to understand if in fact there are accounts that have purchased beyond their credit limit. So we highlight the column, we right click, and we insert. And this is going to be our credit limit. And this again is another VLOOKUP table. So we highlight the first cell. We go equal VLOOKUP, the beginning parenthesis. We can hit the function bar. It's easier that way. What we're looking up is we are looking up the account number. The table array of where we are comparing this to is we're comparing it to the first column in the table array. So we're picking up the table and then whatever takes place within this table is if there's a match, we're going to pick up the third column. So in this case, this is the third column. What we're looking for is the range lookup. This is going to be false. And we hit OK. And we now have our credit limits. Now, one of the first things that we want to do is for this calculation is we're not interested in accounts that are NA because they have no credit limit to begin with. But what we are interested in are these accounts where we have account names, 
we have account balances, and when, then we have the credit limits. We're going to insert another column, and in this column is the, we're just looking at AR minus the credit limit. And essentially is we're going AR balance minus the credit limit, and we're looking for positive numbers. So we can pull this up here and we can filter is where that it is greater than, greater than and equal to is fine, but greater than zero. And then what we have is we have two accounts where there are credit balances that are greater than the credit limit. We can do another conditional formatting on this. So in this column, what we want to do is we want to set up a criteria so that we can easily identify these accounts. So we go back to our conditional formatting and we look at a new rule and the new rule is going to, we're going to identify cells that contain a cell value that is greater than zero and let's do a nice pretty color in terms of the formatting. We'll do a nice blue here. We'll do a border range and we click OK. OK over here. And then what you see is that in our file is we have two accounts that are the accounts receivable balance is greater than the credit limit. So again, what we've done is we've identified a number of issues that you will need to articulate, and not in a lot of narrative, uh, but in, in you can essentially embed all of your comments in the Excel database, in the Excel file. So with a customer listing, you want to make some comments here. The accounts receivable, we identified a number of things that you want to talk about. You can simply just create a box and put the answers there. The aging report, we're going to need some comments in this. But essentially what we've been able to do is we've been looking at conditional formatting. We've been looking at the sum if range. We've been doing the lookup tables. We've been doing pivot tables all within this data file. And within our analysis, we've come up with a number of audit findings. So it's your goal to take this information and to put it together in terms of a, not a long report, but I wanna see the Excel file. I wanna see that you've actually done this correctly with, the, with all the tools that we've talked about. And I want you then to write a brief narrative related to each of the findings. I thank you very much and everybody have a great day. Thank you.